So insulting a prophet or a man is not blasphemy. Even though in the Quran it may say you must obey Allah and his messenger, that's only Allah's words via his messenger. His messenger in and of himself, if he's having an off day, do you know what I mean? Like the satanic verses, for example, that's not um, to be obeyed. And to denig excuse me, Paul, Paul. Uh, the, the, the top it, I'm gonna, okay, so hi everybody, here we are in uh, the Open Air Asylum, that is Speaker's Corner, and we, uh, this, uh, I was going to say gentlemen, this young man and I will be discussing, uh, he's going to do some apologetics for Islam, hopefully, um, and some polemics against Christianity, and I'm going to counteract that with some apologetics for Christianity and some polemics of Islam. Uh, I think that's enough for now because my arm is already aching holding my phone and also it's very hot. So you can do the opening a couple of minutes each or just like in your mind, sort of aim for a couple of minutes. So just uh, discuss the divinity of Christ or...? We're gonna d you're going to try and prove maybe that Christ is not divine and I'm going to tell you why Muhammad is so much not a prophet that it's not even funny. So I'm going to attack Islam and you're going to attack Christianity and then we're both going to... That's what polemics are for Islam, for Islam. That's polemics. You're going to attack the idea, and I'm going to defend the idea. And so I'm going to defend Christ. You're going to attack, and you're going to uh, defend Muhammad, and I'm going to attack. That's Sarek. Yeah. No All right, so I'll start with um, the words of Paul. Actually, I won't start with Jesus. I'll start with Paul. Um, he says in Acts chapter two, verse twenty-two. He says that Jesus of Nazareth is a man chosen by God or credited by God, and he has come to the men with wonders, miracles, and signs. And he says that God did it through him. So, how would you address that? I would address that by answering that Jesus Christ is. Because of the hypostatic union, not only is he 100% God, but he is 100% man. So Paul is absolutely correct in saying that he is a man sent by God because he is also the eternal son sent by the Father. So that's fine. He, uh, what was the second part of Paul's statement? Did Paul say in that verse, by the way, that he's not divine? Because I know that's not true. He said that God did it through him. God did it through him. That's absolutely fine. All things were created by or through him. So that, that denotes the divinity and Paul speaks of that also. So that's how I'd answer that. I would ask, um, what would I ask about Islam? I would say um, maybe things such as the Mosaic law. So Allah says he reveals the fi first five books, the Psalms and the Injil. Um, and the claim is that nothing uh, that Allah reveals, his words cannot be corrupted. So how do you then defend if you hold this position that the Bible has been corrupted when Allah reveals that he has at least revealed the first five books, the Psalms and the Injil? How do you say that his word has been corrupted? Uh, there, there is a verse in the Quran that says that these revelations have been preserved. Uh, but I would say preserved, yeah, yeah. meaning the Injil and the Torah and the Psalms. We're not talking, but we're not talking about. I am. I just asked you. No, I'm saying it's not on earth. They're preserved in heaven in tablets. That's what we believe. We believe that the previous revelations are preserved so, in heaven. Excellent. All right. My counter to that would be: Why then would Allah, through Jibril, through Muhammad? Um, advise Muslims to go and speak to the people of the book that was revealed beforehand if it's in heaven only in tablet form even though heaven is a spiritual realm I assume in Islam is oh no no sorry Jannah isn't but yeah how, why would he say go and speak to these people if you're in doubt about that which we have revealed go therefore and speak to the people who have been reading the book bef books before you if they're not extant on the earth at the time of the revelation what does he mean? Does he mean kill yourself and nip up to heaven and check the... T like, what does he mean? Um, if you're going to, to the Ahl al-Kitab for advice, he's not here saying that use their, the book that they have now as a source of authority. Which now? This now or the now at the time? During their time. He is saying use them as... An, he is actually. He's saying if you're in doubt, meaning if you're unsure as to the truth of these newer revelations, refer back to my my Allah's older revelations and the people who have been following that way the Jews and the Christians so he is appealing to their authority in their knowledge of the previously extant scriptures what he's saying is is if you if you're not sure check with these guys they're going to affirm it for you that's his he's not saying go and they're going to polemicize you he's he's claiming that they have an authority and that they have been reading the scripture of Allah for a lot longer but you you're saying that's not the case are you saying it's some sort of Quranic iteration that he's referring back to? 
you're saying that there's fragmented evidence. Do you say he's referring people back to some other Islamic, uh, not Islamic because he claims that the Bible is his. Are you saying that he's not talking about the Psalms and the Ujil and the Torah? Today, not today, I'm talking about Allah in the seventh century speaking through Jibril to Muhammad. Does Allah say, if you're in doubt, you know he does, if you're in doubt about that which we have revealed, I don't know if he's talking to Muslims, to be fair, or just Muhammad, because it's unclear. It's you. It could be a pluralized you. I mean, the revelation is for the whole of mankind. So. I thought it was just for the Arabs. I thought each. I thought there were. Sorry, I'm going to give my evidence. I thought there were 124,000 prophets of Islam, and each was sent to the people in their own tongue. So there should be an Eskimo uh, prophet for Islam. There should be a Japanese. Well, this is what the this yeah, is okay, what the literature states. I'm not making assumptions. I'm reading it from my memory do, of do the verse. Uh, of the hadith. Well, anyway. so, uh, yeah, because I, I had, uh, I probably had dots and vowels to be able to not have to recite stuff. So, do you know about the position of Muhammad Peace compared to the previous prophets? Um, I know what you think, yeah, but I say he's not a prophet. No, 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 I'm talking about, because you just said... Uh, These 123,999 that came before him, yeah? yeah? There are 50 maybe in the Bible. Muslims don't hold to all of those because only if they're found in the first five books in the Psalms and the Injil, you see. So, for example, Isaiah, even though Isaiah 53 is used, it's not revealed by Allah. Allah uh, vouches for that. What I'm asking you is, if Muhammad is the seal of the prophets, he's the last prophet, and there are claimed to be 124,000, that means that the other lot had to come before him. And if they are going to people in their own tongue, that means that... Uh, the revelation in the Quran is not for all of mankind because that's for the Arab people because it's revealed in their tongue and the other prophets of Allah would come to the people in their own tongue. Allah isn't claiming that the Torah was revealed in Arabic, is he? Yeah, it's obvious. Exactly. So where does the Quran say that it's only for the Arabs? Uh, no, I just made the logical case as to why it's saying. If there are, if there are 124,000 prophets and each is sent to a person, uh, peoples, in their mother tongue, then the Arabic uh, revelation of Allah is sent via Muhammad. I can accept that. Why can't, why can't the Arabic be universal? Because why are, why are there another 123,999 prophets of Islam? And where are they? And where are their books? I thought that was a I thought that was a tenet of being a prophet that you come with the one name and uh, some revelation. Okay, so all right, what um, let's see what uh, what Taiwanese um, prophet? It, do you have records of these prophets? We wouldn't claim. We'd say that the prophets would have been concentrated around the Middle East. That's not the case with regards to the 124,000 prophets because Islam was first brought to the Arabs by Muhammad. We can agree on that, yeah. To the to the Qurayshi and to that that area. We say Islam has been here, so as I understand what you mean, even though the Quran actually uh, Islam, Islam in its final iteration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was sent to the Arabs. Arabs. Exactly. exactly. So then, therefore, the previous incumbents of the title Prophet of Allah, right? They had to. They they are. They must be by definition before Muhammad because he is the last prophet allegedly according to Islam. Exactly. So I'm asking you, where are they? Where's the America? Like, where's the Native American prophet of Islam? Or where is his works? Where is his words? If he didn't bring a book, that's fine. But where is it recorded? Do you see? Yeah, we would say that those texts are preserved. That's a that's a good way, isn't it? Okay. So uh, all right, they're on tablets, I imagine. Tablets. So I therefore, the, uh, I will take your word for it. Therefore, the um, the revelation to the Arabs is not exclusive. It might be the final iteration, as that gentleman just said. But therefore, the previous is it your father? Did you say? Oh, that's lovely. Um, so therefore, the previous ones, even if they're in heaven preserved, they're now non-existent for human beings to follow. So non-Arabic speakers of, like I say, uh, the Inuit people, for example. That means it's exclusionary. They don't have access to the true Arabic revelation because, of course, I'm always told as a non-Arabic speaker, I can't possibly understand correctly because I don't speak Arabic. And that, to me, doesn't seem like a universal proclamation of faith. Paul, hold your horses. Paul is capable. You don't need to be an Arab to understand that. Well, many Muslims have lied then. If I take your word for that. 
the idea that there is one God, uh, the oneness of God, is easy to, easy to express in any language. You don't need to know the Arabic of the Quran. The message of the Quran is very easily translated into any language. So you can say to, you say to people in the obscurest parts of the world, there's only one God, one creator. You don't associate partners, so Jesus is not God, Mary's not God. Mohammed, people uh, shouldn't be killed for insulting Mohammed. He's doing another driveway, can you believe it? The message is very, very simple. Excellent, Paul. Thank you. All right. Brilliant, Paul. Paul, thank you very much for your contribution, but I'm speaking to this boy. Thank you. I, 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 I'm not, not going to take your word as gospel. You understand why? English. Yes, one iteration. I'm not saying I want to do this, but if I to do it on the floor of the Bible. Paul, I'm not having a conversation with you, though, with respect. I'm speaking to this young man. If I were to bash the Bible on the floor and you yeah. stomp on it, right? Yeah. Do you consider that blasphemy? No. no. You're not claiming to be God by doing so, are you? No, no, no. Blasphemy. No, no, no. This is something that Pakistan actually probably needs to hear more frequently. Blasphemy is a claim to divinity or denigrating the name or the divinity of God. So insulting a prophet or a man is not blasphemy. Even though in the Quran it may say you must obey Allah and his messenger, that's only Allah's words via his messenger. His messenger in and of himself, if he's having an off day, do you know what I mean? Like the satanic verses, for example, that's not um, to be obeyed and to den excuse me, Paul, Paul, but Paul. All right, I'm going to have to pause. I'm going to have to speak to camera because I'm not speaking to Paul. Excellent. Okay, so what I'd like to say is, so Paul did this last week as well, and uh, I'm not on the Paul Williams show. Okay, so do you want to point the camera at me? I can do a wrap up because I think we're finished. What happened there, Kate? What happened there? I have no idea. Uh, Paul did another drive by. He's terrified of Islam being uh, exposed because he's been in and out of Islam more times than ooh, I would like to say. An okie cokey, shall we say. <laughs> so, anyway, no, I'm certainly not listening, um, except for I heard that. So yeah, that's a shame because he's just ended your debate, it seems. If you'd rather speak to him, that's that's absolutely fine. Well, I don't know, he doesn't seem to be able to stand up for himself. Maybe he needs to have uh, some higher authority in Islam who's in and out. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm only joking. <laughs> anyway, that was over pretty lively. Um, if you notice, for a mini Ahmadid Ahmadidat, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't seem to have many answers apart from it's in heaven. With, with the 60,000 boys who don't believe. Can you believe it? Can you believe it, Abbas? <laughs> ah, okay, well, we, we can debate the definition. <laughs> Is he, is he, uh, do you think he is? No, oh, I'm not even going to say it, that's rude. No. Anyway, so yeah, Asif can deal with this. Um, a man and a woman shall join together though, Abbas. We agree, a man and a woman join together. So, uh, yeah. Anywho, so um, this young boy, like very politely came and asked for a debate and Paul has completely taken over. Listen, I do say God save the Queen, but it's not you, Paul. So you are rude beyond belief. You came and hijacked a stream of mine last week with your not like nonsense polemics. So anyway, God bless you. And uh, I'm a homophobe, not at all. Not at all, you're acting like you should have a twin set and pearls on. I'm not a homophobe. I don't have any phobia. I know what a sin is, if that's what you're asking. Put your glasses on, young man. Anywho, so I think I think that's about that then. Unfortunately, Paul is uh, ad hominem and straw manning in the background. He knows he's rude. He can't even stand on Islam for, for too long without leaving and receiving threats and all of a sudden going back again. Come to Jesus. If you don't have the blood of Christ, you are doomed. You are doomed to be... I'm not praying and I'm not prophesying. No, you're not praying. I'm not speaking. I'm not unceasingly. Pray all the time. But actually, the head, cover, the head covering verses, I misspoke. A hijab. I misspoke. She's uncovered. According to Paul, you're a prostitute. Anyway, excuse me. Well, at least I, you know, listen, because I'm not reading the Bible and I'm not praying. I don't care what you say, Paul says. No, I don't care what you say. Everyone heard what I just said. I'm not going to be heckled by a drag act. I'm just not going to do it. It is Speaker's Corner. This young man desired a debate. But he can't stand up for himself. He's very happy so to I'm happy that he's happy, but not you, you because you're rude, because I'm not in church. Anyway, my hair is my glory, as the Bible says. And uh, that's all from Speaker's Corner, where Paul is desperately trying to prevent 
uh, the truth of Jesus being preached or defended. I wonder why. I wonder why. I'm not entertaining it. I'm not entertaining it. I'm not giving him the views. I sound like Hashim, but I'm just not doing it. All right, then God bless you. And you can play some music and uh, elevate the music, everybody. Hit, hit, get to Paul. All right, Paul, Paul. Oh, the mic. What's going on, Paul? Hi, Mum. I had a lot of dreams when we got to the island. I need to go to the toilet. What are you doing? What are you doing? What for? I'm not feeling like I'm chatting. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'll debate him and his daughter.